Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So this is a question that, you know, that keeps coming up over and over and over again uh, through YouTube and through different parts of social media. Whenever we're doing a video talking about, you know, calling the people back to the Quran and the Sunnah, the people keep asking about a madhab. Shouldn't you follow a madhab? Why are you not talking about madhab? Because whenever, obviously, because a lot of the books that I talk about are the books of Shokani. And Shokani, uh, uh, rahimahullah, is obviously a person that was a completely against the madhahib and he called the people back to understanding the Quran and the Sunnah the way that it was supposed to be understood, the way that it was understood by the Sahaba, and the way that it was understood by the people that these madhabs are they, these madhahib are, are named after. So the thing is, is first off, the Prophet Sallallahu we gotta take his last wasiyah. Uh, and that that came in the hadith of uh, Al Arabad ibn Isariya, in which he said, you know, Wa'adana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa jilat minha al kulub, wa darafat minha al you know, so this was a this was a strong, strong, strong uh, sermon that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam preached to them. That you know that their hearts shook, and uh, and uh, and tears were coming out of their eyes. And then what did they what did they say to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Can ha mo mo That this is like this is like the the preaching of a person who's who's gonna leave us, who's about to who's basically given like a final warning to the people. And what what was the final thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did say? I mean, first off, he ordered the people with like to hear and obey. He said to hear and obey, even if a slave were to take control of the country, and he's a, but he's a Muslim, then he's the will al-amr, and then you know we have like a summit with thought. We have obedience to that ruler, as long as he does not order us to do disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And then what did he say after that? We well, said wa alaykum bi-sunnati, wa sunnat al-khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdiin min ba'di. He said it's upon you to follow my sunnah. And the sunnah of the the sunnah of the Khulafa al Rashidin, which are which uh, starts off with Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali. Those are the Khulafa al Rashidin, Khulafa al Rashidin al Mahdiin that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioning in his hadith. He said, "Min ba'di, wa'adu alayha bin nawajid," and he said, "And bite onto it, I hold onto it with your nawajid, and that this is what you should take hold of. This is what you, if you're going to have a tamasuk bihi, then this is what you should." hold fast to. You hold fast to the sunnah of the messenger and the understanding of the sahaba. This is what we, we hold fast to. And he said, And he said, and be careful, beware of these newly invented matters. And what newly invented matters? After he mentioned this, did he, didn't, did he mention anything else? Did he mention that it's upon us to follow some madhab of anybody else? To follow the madhab of Abi Hanifa, of uh, Imam Malik, of Imam Shafi'i, of Imam, uh, of Imam Ahmed, did he mention that? Is that mentioned anywhere in the Quran and the Sunnah? Because I would like to understand where the people get this from. And I'll be, I'll be happy to follow the same madhab that Abu Bakr followed, that Omar followed, that, uh, that Uthman followed, and that Ali followed, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Whatever their madhab was, then that's our madhab. And it's the way that the ulama used to believe before, either sah al-hadith for huwa madhabi. You know, if the hadith is authentic, then that's my madhab. So this, this whole idea and this concept of like, a, Making an obligation upon the people to follow the madahib. This is not an uh, this is this this right here is not an obligation upon the people. The obligation of the people is to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Now, do we take from the uh Imam al Arma? They're 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 the Imams. You know, not just them. You know, you know, we have you you have these four Imams, but you also have who else? Well, first off, first thing that we're supposed to take from is from the from the Salaf which are the first three generations, number one being the Sahaba. So whenever we have a hadith and whenever we're dealing with the understanding of the hadith, the first thing that we go back to is we go back to how the, uh, how the Sahaba understood this. We go back, and this is this is found in the books of hadith. It's found in the Muwatta of Imam Malik. It's, fa it's found in Sunan Abi Dawud. It's found all throughout Sahih Bukhari. And it's found in other books. If you go through all the different books that were compiled by all the imma from before, you find all of these statements from the Sahaba. You find statements from Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud. You find all the statements from you know, all different types of ulama of the Sahaba. So is, is that what the people are calling to? So should I call the people to go to Abi Hanifa or, uh, or Malik or Shafi'i or Imam Ahmed or any of these imma and, and leave off the understanding of the Sahaba? All right, and the same thing, who were the students of the Sahaba? So we look at the Kibar Tabi'in, and we go back to their statements, and we go to back to their understanding, and we see what they say about these different ahadith. What was their understanding? Because they got the, they got the understanding directly from the Sahaba. This is our madhab. 
This is what we call the people to. As far as calling the people to follow like, you know, a specific book and a specific madhab, then that's 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 wrong. Because uh, the madhab are ba based on ishtihad. The majority of the madhab is based on ishtihad. And ishtihad, we know. There's only one right answer. And what if he's not got the, what if he doesn't have the right answer? What if the other imam has the right answer? So you're going to follow this imam in every single thing that he says, whether it's correct or whether it's incorrect. No, the only person that we follow like that is we follow because the, the only one that doesn't have an incorrect, the, 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 the only person that lived in this religion that has no incorrect is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's who we take from directly. That's the only one that we will take from with no questions asked. But as far as like, you know, stipulating upon the people and saying you have to follow this specific madhab, where is the evidence from that? Where is the evidence for that in the Quran and the Sunnah? I mean, I've, all I see throughout the Quran and the Sunnah, I see, you know, the obedience to the Messenger uh, and obedience to Allah. You know, and the Ulil Amri Minkum, and the Ulil Amri, of course, is the, it goes back to the Uli Al Amur, it could be the rulers, and the Uli Al Amur can also be the ulama. But the ulama, as you see, that it follows the, the obedience to Allah and His Messenger. So that means that their, their obedience, the obedience to the ulama and the obedience to the rulers is only obedience in a, as long as they're calling to what is in, in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. That's our madhab. So our madhab is focusing on the hadith. Our focus is not focusing on uh, the statements of fulan and fulan and fulan and fulan. You know, I would rather sit down and encourage the people to memorize Bulugh maram than to sit down and memorize that in Mustaqna. Why would I encourage people to read a bunch of speech of the people when you can go and you can read the hadith for yourself and get the hadith from your, for yourself? This is the understanding of a person that he took from the hadith. Go back to the source. The source is the Quran and the Sunnah. And if we're going to motivate the people to, to, to read things, to understand things, and to especially to memorize, because nothing on nothing in, in, in Talib al-Ilm takes more time out of our lives, the memorization. Even Imam Ibn Jozi mentioned in uh, Sayyid al-Khatir that this should be the vast majority of the time, like 65 to 75% of the time of the student, even up to 85% of the time should be spent only in memorization alone. So why would I tell a person to waste all that time memorizing the speech and the statements of other people other than the Prophet Sallallahu Use that energy to memorize the Quran and memorize the Sunnah that's what you should be using. And if you have extra energy, then go back and read and find the statements of the Sahaba and these different Masail. Because we have statements from the Sahaba about the, you know, all these different issues in fiqh. They, they exist. You think that, that, the, that the people like got, we got to the time of Imam Ahmed and they were coming up with something that wasn't in the time of the Sahaba, that they didn't understand. All the principles and foundations of this religion were complete at the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed this religion. So there's nothing new that's going to come about through anybody. So anybody that says now that I am obliged to follow, like I have to, it's obligatory upon me to follow one of these imams, akhi, then come with, come with the Quran and the Sunnah. Where's your evidence for that? Our, our obligation is to focus on like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and understanding the speech of Allah. And that, uh, uh, that understanding, it comes from understanding the Quran. As we understand with the tafsir, is the Quran bil Quran. And the Quran bil Hadith, you know, and then we go through the Aqwal of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, and then we look at the, the, the Arabic language. Where, where were we ever obliged to follow the Madahib and the understanding of the Quran? And where were we ever obliged to follow uh, the, the Madahib and the understanding of the Hadith? Who, who made this an obligation? Who? And where is that? where does that exist in the Quran and the Sunnah? So there are our obedience is to Allah and our obedience to the Messenger. So if you have the energy... Memorize the Quran and memorize the Sunnah. If you have extra energy, then memorize the statements of the Sahaba. If you have extra energy, then go memorize the statements of the Kibara Tabi'een. You know, the big Tabi'een. The, the big Tabi'een that took from the from the Sahaba directly, the big Sahaba. All right. And we're talking about, you know, because uh, even as far as knowledge is concerned, you know, you have like the ulama from the Sahaba and you have even Sahaba that narrated one hadith. And like this, and you had a Sahaba that narrated a thousand hadiths, and you had Tabi'een from the Kibar Tabi'een that were from the Mukthari, uh, from the Mukthirin of the Hadith that they narrated a bunch of hadith that we see, like a Zuhri, for example. How many chains of narrations do you see the name of Zuhri in? So go back and see what his understanding is. What was Shabi's understanding? 
What were, what were, you know, go back and see this. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, what was his understanding? Why, why do you keep telling the people to go back to four individuals? To four individuals. Why, why, why would we do that? Why would we limit ourselves to these four individuals that came later? And the ones that did come later, uh, alhamdulillah, like uh, Imam Malik, he studied with Imam Nafi. Imam, Imam Nafi was the Mullah of Ibn Umar. And that's why that's one of the strongest uh, Sanid. And this is what they call the uh, Sanid of the Habir. Is that when you see the, the chain of narration of Imam Malik and Nafi and Ibn Umar, it's, it's a, that's a sahih, a sahih hadith. That's one, of, that's one of the strongest narrations. So we go back and we look at the statements of Imam Malik. We don't, I'm not saying don't look at them. But why would we also leave off all the other tabi'in? All the other tabi'in that went out and they, they went out and they left their areas. They went to Iraq. They went to, they went to Sham. They went to Yemen. They went to Misr. And they went to all these places collecting and collecting, collecting the hadith and getting the understanding of hadith and compiling this for us. Uh, the best book of fiqh that a person could read after the Quran is Sahih Bukhari. If anybody really understood the benefit of Sahih Bukhari, especially the chapter headings of Sahih Bukhari, and what he did as far as fiqh is concerned, then, you know, if you don't really get that type of benefit out of Sahih Bukhari, then you don't understand Sahih Bukhari. If you look at like uh, Fath al-Bari, uh, half of the, uh, the bin Hajar, and look what he did with it. Because look what he was able to do with it because of Sahih Bukhari. He understood what Bukhari was trying to do, inshallah. And that's why you see the explanation is the best explanation of all the books of Hadith. But if you go and you pay attention to the tabweeb, the chapter headings of Bukhari, you get that fiqh. You get the fiqh. You get the understanding from the, of the Quran and the Sunnah. The way that the Sahaba understood it without being attached to these madahib. But who, who's calling the people to do that? So you're calling the people to follow Abi Hanifa. Uh, you're calling the people to follow Imam Malik, Imam Shafi. Okay, tayyib. But you're not also calling the people to do this. So why is it only limited to four people? We don't limit ourselves, Akhi. We take, we take the truth. Because well, what we're trying to do is we're trying our, our goal, our final goal. We have the Quran and we have the Sunnah of the Messenger, the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger. And we are trying to understand these two things the way that the Sahaba understood them. That's it. I'm not trying to understand it the way this person and that person and this person. And I'm trying to understand it the way the Sahaba understood it. The same thing that Imam Ahmed was trying to do. The same thing that Imam Shafi was trying to do. And this is the same thing that Imam Malik was trying to do. And inshallah, it was the same thing that Abu Hanifa was trying to do. So that's what we try to do. We don't try to follow people that try to follow other people. We try to follow the people that were trying to get to that understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah, the way that the Sahaba understood it. So that's what we call the people to. So this is what I want the people to get that understanding. So if you look at the books of Imam Shokani, that's what he was doing. If you read the books of Imam Shokani, he quotes the Sahaba. He brings statements of the Sahaba. He brings statements from the Aimat al Arba and Wagayrahim. You know, and, and and other than the and then these four Imams. He doesn't limit himself to just that. Because he's trying to get a, uh, get to the truth. His objective is to get the correct understanding of this hadith and how we're going to act upon it. That's it. That's your goal. As a Muslim, you want to understand the Quran and you want to understand the Sunnah, but you want to have that understanding. And that's why when we say the word Salafi, to get the correct understanding of what Salafi means, because a lot of people say the word, but do they really, really understand what that means? And that's what it is. It's trying to get back and get that understanding of the Salaf al-Saleh. The Salaf al-Saleh are the, those three generations of the, the generation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Sahaba, the generation of the Tabi'een, and the de generation of the Atba'a Tabi'een. And we look at the big, big ulama from each generation and we try our best to get that understanding from them. All right, and that's it. So, but, but who's calling the people to that? You know, who's the calling the people now to go back and let's, let's go back and start reading Bukhari in the Masajid. Let's start reading Sahih Muslim in the Masajid. Let's start reading Sunan Abi Dawood in the Masajid. Let's start reading Musnad of Imam Ahmed in the Masajid. Who's calling the people to this? Even the Maliki people, the people that so much claim that they're Malikis. Show me one of their Masajid where they're teaching the Muwatta. When they're focusing on the Hadith and they're focusing on understanding the Hadith. So this is not this is not the what we're calling the people to. We're not calling the people to 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 say, okay, we're going to be Maliki. We're just going to take from Muhtasar Khalil because you know you look what the Maliki say in regards to Muhtasar Khalil. Either either Dalla Khalil Dalalna. What type of understanding of the religion is this? So if Khalil 
was was uh, misguided in his ishtihad and his muhtasar, and you're taking and you're doing taqlid of Khalil, that's what he said. Either dhalla Khalil, dhalalna. Then we're then we're misguided with him. Because that's what they're that's they're, this is this is what the ulama say. This is what they say. What type of understanding of the religion is this? <coughs> so we take from the person Madal, evident, you know, the, the person who was never misguided. And that's the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum wa an. So Allah has already mentioned his pleasure with them. And he chose them to be the carriers of this deen. This is who we take from. So call the people to that. Call the people to go back and get the understanding of the Sahaba. Call the people to go back and read the hadith. <coughs> you want to start doing something in the masajid in America? Start reading Bukhari with the people. Start reading the Bukhari with the Asanid and teaching the people who these people in the Asanid are. Who are these people? Who are these ulama and these Asanid? These are the people that we should be taking from, right? Why aren't the people calling to that? Why only four individuals? Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. The ulama from this religion are way more. Look at Bukhari and how many different sheikhs that he had. More than a thousand. And the same thing with Imam Ahmed. And look at all of them. And look at all the, you know, all the books and everything that they wrote. And now we're going to limit ourselves to, to the statements of four individuals. And leave off the sunnah of the messenger. Leave off the statements of the sahaba. And not even go back to that. No, we don't call the people to that. If we're going we're gonna to understand this religion, we're going to understand it the way that they understood it. We're going to stop where they stopped. And we're going to say what they said. That's it. Wherever they stopped, we stopped. You know, where, wherever they, whatever they said, that's what we're going to, because that was their understanding. <coughs> I don't care about the understanding of other people if it goes against their understanding. Allah Musta'an.